What's going on fellow Maplers? Surprisingly, for once I actually have a timely video and not last minute. On July 9th, we will be having the ultimate combination of Star Force events. Not just the 5, 10, 15 free stars, but also a 30% discount in tandem. It's pretty rare that both of these line up, and this is hands down the best event for powering up your account. This video will cover three main topics. Which characters to Star Force based on your playstyle and account progression, what you should be doing to prep, and my recommendation on the best approach to Star Force including tips to mitigate the risk of gambling away all your gains. Let's dive right in. Which characters should you Star Force? If you're just starting out, it's pretty simple. Whichever character is your main and you plan on spending most of your time. If you need help picking a main, then go to my How to Choose a Hyperburn class video. You'll have limited resources at this point in the game, so you can really only focus on one character anyway. Outside of just starting out, I'm going to bucket two main playstyles, vertical progression or horizontal progression. Let's help determine what you prefer. For vertical progression, think of it as climbing rungs of a ladder. Do you want to improve one character to reach new tiers of bosses? This involves a lot more mobbing, which will also be your main source of income. Vertical progression tends to be a more narrow playstyle as it's focused on one character, and most of your gameplay will be grinding the same few maps. But you get to experience MapleStory's core content, and game bosses much faster. For this playstyle, focus on your main character. For horizontal progression, think of it as building an economy. Do you want to improve multiple characters to generate weekly income? This involves a broader playstyle as you get to play and experience multiple classes in greater depth. Your gameplay will focus on weekly boss clears for mesos. However, dividing your time and resources across characters delays your progress into the late game. If you have a longer term view, eventually the income you generate from other boss meals will pay off and this will be more efficient. But it usually takes months to make a boss meal profit. So for this playstyle, focus on multiple characters that will become boss meals. A couple things to consider. I'm assuming you are still working on Legion and Lynx. The playstyles are based on characters going past level 210. Also, this and future advice in my videos is based on reasonable amounts of playtime where you are likely making trade-offs and where you spend your time in-game. To give you my personal thoughts, I chose horizontal progression when I started. I have 6 bossers including my main. To be honest with you, I forget to boss on all but 2 of them most weeks. I boss on my main and previous hyper burning character, a 250 Luminous. It gets kind of tedious to log on to my 220 mules when there are events, burning characters, dailies and weeklies, and legion grinds to still complete. I'd rather have that variety and the feeling of progression from all those events rather than doing what feels like a chore at times. It just hasn't been fun for me and I want to have fun when I play. Getting to 220 and doing some early bossing on them was fun, just not the weekly follow ups, so I tend to just forget about my mules. The progression on them is still helpful, and I can always pick them up again, but they really haven't paid off for me in terms of income. I've started to focus more on my main in the meantime. Ultimately though, play the way you enjoy the most. Should have put that as the TLDR for this section. Alright, now that you know which characters you want to focus on, there are two main ways to prepare for the event. Accumulate mesos and stack copies of gear. Let's address mesos first. As of the release of this video, there are 12 days left to prepare. I'll go over three main things you should prioritize to get mesos over the course of this time. The first and most accessible is completing your daily Ursus and Maple Tour clears. The big meso bear will net you 90 to 100 mil a day when cleared during 2x hours. If you can't find a team, just create a party and join solo to wail on it until you die. You will still get just as many mesos. By the time the event starts, this is a free 1.2 bill. Additionally, go run through Maple Tour at level 200 twice a day to get an additional 500 mil by the time the event starts. This is nearly a free 2 bill for just a few minutes of your time every day, which is huge when starting out and you don't have access to many bosses or meso drop boosts. The second thing you should be doing is completing as many weekly and daily boss clears across your account as you can. You have up to 180 boss crystals you can sell a week. Use all of them. Even if you can't clear any weekly bosses yet, clearing daily hard bond Leon, Arcarium, Magnus, Papalatus, and Renmaro across your characters to max out your crystals over the next two resets 
will net you about 4.6 billion. This is not all that hard to obtain unless you are brand new to the game. Obviously, clear higher tier bosses for more income. Lastly, if you have the time, grind with Legion wealth buffs, wealth potions, 100% in legendary potential meso lines, and meso drop familiars. This is the best time to do it as everyone has access to a free 30 day vac pet. You can do this without all these things, but keep in mind it results in lower rates than I described. With all these buffs, a reasonable rate is about 400 million mesos an hour. Each week you have 10 hours in Legion wealth buffs available to you. If you utilize all of those over the next two weeks, it will net you about 8 billion mesos. This is pretty conservative calculation as well. In total, just doing these basic things will accumulate 14 bill by the time the event starts. For new players, I wouldn't expect you to complete all of these, but I could reasonably see you getting 5 bill, which is enough to see a massive account progression during the event. Now that you know how to accumulate a baseline of mesos, let's move on to the second most important resource to gather, duplicates of the items you plan to star force. If you plan on going past 16 stars during the event, which almost all of you should, there's a chance to boom your item. Don't get caught with your dick in your hand, unable to fill a gear slot because you accidentally boomed without a duplicate. You should be doing this on a much longer time frame than two weeks because some drops are much rarer and you can only have a shot at them once a week. But for most people, they will have plenty of copies of CRA gear and boss accessories available to them by starting now until the time the event starts. Utilizing old simulation data, I'm going to ballpark how many duplicates you need. Obviously, with variants, this is no guarantee. Due to the event and the Star Force update, with one copy of your gear, it is extremely unlikely you will boom getting to 17 stars without safeguarding. You can expect about 1 to 2 booms getting to 21 stars and 2 to 3 booms getting to 22 stars. Less than 21 stars is less than 1 boom on average. I wouldn't recommend going for 22 stars without at least a few duplicates of any item. Keep this in mind for the next section. Now that you know a bit more about accumulating the resources you need, let's get into how you should approach star forcing. For all characters and playstyles, your first goal should be 17 stars on all gear. It costs less than 1 bill on average to get 17 stars with these two events in tandem, which is insanely cheap. Past 17 stars, the meso cost per stat goes up really quickly. This is a great baseline for all characters. Prioritize gear that will last you for longer periods in the game, so you're not trading out gear you already dumped mesos into as frequently. This includes CRA gear, Absolab gear, and accessories that can get up to 25 stars. If you're focusing on horizontal progression, stop at 17 stars. Boss meals are about generating income invest as little as you can to start seeing returns to be spent elsewhere on your characters. 17 Star Force gear mixed with boost nodes, epic to unique potential across your equips, and legendary potential on your emblem, weapons, and gloves will be sufficient in clearing up Delomian. If you're brand new and haven't even broken into Chaos Root Abyss yet, you will need to do a bit more prep. Don't tune out though, this approach is also great for new boss meals you plan on building. I do this on all characters regardless of Star Force event or not. I'm going to throw a lot at you, but this will be the most efficient path to jumping into early game bossing. Start by clearing hard Renmaru daily to get copies of the gloves, cape, and boots. Keep one of each. Clear the Haven and Dark World tree weeklies each reset. On event day, get 17 stars on your Golden Clover belt. Then get 16 stars on your Pencilier gear. Go and clear 3 door CRA. Just Learn the mechanics. You can do it at this point on any character. Just make sure you get a few sources of ignore defense as well. If you're really struggling, create a boss party looking for another person to struggle clear. After you clear each door, transfer hammer your Penslayer hat and body to two of your three CRA pieces. Star force them to 17 stars. Get 17 stars on your third CRA piece. After that, join a struggle party for Lotus and Damien, also known as Lomian. Pray for two energy cores and spirit stones. Exchange those with the weekly quest pieces for coins. Buy Absolab gloves from the Haven shop. This is your priority because legendary potential on gloves can get you critical damage lines, which are equivalent to at least three lines of stat. You can focus on that later. Transfer your Pencilier gloves to Renmaru's gloves, Star Force them to 16 stars, 
transfer your Admirer's gloves to the Absolab gloves. Starforce them to 17 stars. Make sure to safeguard your Absolab gloves just in case. Next, if you don't have any more Mesos, save your Damien coins for the weapon. If you do have more Mesos, buy the Absolab shoulder. Starforce this to 17 stars. That will give you plenty to do on Sunday the 9th, and should take under 7 billion Mesos on average, which will be most, if not all of your resources, if you follow the preparation section. If you have more saved up and are building mules, rinse and repeat for those other characters. Or, save the rest for Miracle Time events that are upcoming in the next weeks. Alright, let's move on to Star Forcing your main Beyond 17 Star Force. I mentioned this earlier, but please make sure you have a few copies of all the gear you plan on Star Forcing. If this is your first push Beyond 17 Stars, focus on your CRA gear, Dominator Pendant, Connor Ring, and the Golden Clover Belt. These items tend to be much easier to get duplicates of than the other types of gear, so you can have plenty of copies in case the game decides it hates you. But if you have copies of others, feel free to include them in the rank. Do not make the mistake of picking one item to go to 22 stars and then move on to the next. If you put all your eggs in one basket and it doesn't pay off because you have a bad string of luck, you'll end the event hating Star Force and feeling burnt out because you made no progress. Instead, work on raising the Star Force across all these items by one at a time. Essentially, first get to 18 stars on all 6 items, then 19, then 20, etc. If you boom an item, build it back up to the tier of Star Force you were aiming for. If you run out of duplicates, stop at 17 stars. What you're doing here is diversifying your assets, same as investing. You are mitigating risk by spreading your wealth. If one of your 6 19 star items booms, it's less impactful than the 9 bill you sank into 22 star item that booms before you've made any progress. You're much more likely to come out on top of the event by doing this. I would stop star forcing once you reach 21 stars on each of these items and when you have less than 2 items left to improve. 22 stars is a lot riskier and only marginally better. Here, I would stop until the next event where you have another set of items to work towards. If you are past the point on your account, fuck you. Because I'm jealous. You probably didn't need this guide to begin with. Sorry, I went too long being tame and informational in this video. The inner degenerate is coming out. Before I get too off the rails, take a gamble on this channel like you would during the Star Force event by liking the video and subscribing. At least that route is 100% a good time. Till next time.